Hi everyone, in this second integration episode we're going to be extending Bracky's equipment system to support the clothing and armor meshes that were created in the previous two graphics videos. Now as before there is a download available for anyone who hasn't been following along with the graphics playlist. So here I've just got the new player blend file and some icons. Now we need to be a little bit careful about how we import the player uh, blend file because of course we've already got this player file in the characters folder and if we just delete this and drag the new one in here then we're going to lose all of our settings so instead what we'll do is navigate over to where this is stored on the hard drive and we'll delete it there and without going back to unity yet we can drag in the new player blend file and make sure that that has the same name as the old one so that when we go back to unity it will just refresh that and we'll retain all of our settings and links to the uh, object in the scene. So that's very nice. We'll then also want to import the icons. So I'll just uh, simply drag those into the sprites folder here. And I'll quickly select these and just change the texture type to sprite and apply that. Okay, let's zoom in on the character here. So you can see he's wearing his armor now. And it's maybe looking a little bit sort of plasticky at the moment. So I'll quickly go into the character's materials folder here. Just select all of these. And for now, I'll just turn the smoothness down to zero. Okay, let's fold out the player graphics so we can see all of the different uh, parts making him up. The body, hair, helmet, pants, and so on. And let's go into the items folder. I'm going to create a new folder here to store the item meshes. And inside of there... I'm going to have the hair, the helmet, the pants, plate body, plate legs, shirt, and shoes. All right, and then I will delete all of those from the player object. Now, we'll want to be able to associate each of these meshes with a particular item object. So let's go into this equipment script. And somewhere near the top here, I'm just going to create a public skinned mesh renderer variable called the mesh. And we can save that. So each of these is, of course, a skinned mesh renderer. So now if we go into one of these items, say this helmet of fire, which I'm going to rename rather blandly to just helmet, then we can go into the meshes and drag the helmet mesh into the mesh slot we just created. I'll also quickly fill out the rest of this. So the name is just going to be helmet now. I'll change the icon to the helmet icon we imported. And I think the rest of that is correct. Let's quickly go through and do the other two pieces of armor. So I'll call this the plate legs. And just rename that up here as well. Set the icon to the plate legs icon the equip slot to the legs and of course set the mesh as well and then this last one here will become the plate body i'll once again rename that up here change the slot to chest I should also set the icon uh, it's over here and finally assign the mesh Okay, now these three items have been assigned to these little pickup objects in the scene. And at the risk of being terribly boring, I quickly want to go through and rename these as well. So this is the plate body pickup. This is the plate legs pickup. And this last one is the helmet pickup. All right, and I'm just going to organize those all under a empty object called test pickups. Okay, so I'll grab these three and parent them to that object. Alright, with this groundwork out of the way, let's go to the game manager and just open up the equipment manager script. And in here we have this equipment array keeping track of all of the currently equipped items, but we're also going to need an array of skinned mesh renderers to keep track of the actual meshes that we're going to be spawning into the scene. So I'll create skinned mesh renderer array called the current meshes and we can initialize that down here 
current meshes is equal to a new skinned mesh render array with a size of num slots. Alright, and then I'm also going to create a public skinned mesh renderer variable called the target mesh, and you'll see the purpose of that in just a moment. Uh, coming down to the equip method, at the bottom here I want to instantiate the new equipment mesh, so let's create a skinned mesh renderer variable called the new mesh, and I'll set this equal to uh, instantiate of type skinned mesh renderer, passing in new item dot mesh. All right, so it's now instantiated the new mesh into the game world. So let's now set its parent object with new mesh dot transform dot parent to the target mesh dot transform. So the target mesh is going to refer to the player mesh and we'll be using that now to tell the new mesh how it should deform. So we want the new mesh to deform based on the bones of the target mesh. So we'll say new mesh dot bones is equal to the target mesh bones. And we'll also say new mesh dot root bone is equal to the root bone of the target mesh. Now we'll of course want to insert this new mesh into our current meshes array. So we can say current meshes with an index of the current slot index is equal to the new mesh. Okay, so now to handle unequipping, uh, once we've checked that the current equipment at the specified slot index isn't null, let's just to be extra sure, check that the current mesh at that slot index is also not null. Then we can go ahead and destroy the mesh by writing destroy current meshes with an index of slot index, and we'll want to get the game object associated with that mesh. All right, let's save that and go into Unity. And we must just remember on the game manager to assign the target mesh here, so that will be the body mesh of the player. We can then try playing this. So I'm going to quickly right click on these three items to pick them up. And if I press I to bring up the inventory, we've got our nice little icons displayed here. I'll click on each of these and those are equipped. You can see that there are some intersections with the body there, but uh, we'll be using blend shapes to fix those in just a moment. But I can now get my character to run around and the armor is uh, deforming with the animations as we'd expect. So that's all good. Uh, let's now try and sort out those intersections. So if we go into the body here, you can see that under blend shapes, we've got these three shapes at the moment, legs, arms, and torso. And uh, these are values from zero to 100. So if I bump each of these up to 100, you can see we get this much skinnier version of the character, and that will help prevent the intersections with the armor. So we want to change these values dynamically based on what the character is wearing. So let me just set these all back to zero. And I'm going to go back into the equipment script and just below this equipment slot enum, I'm going to create a new enum called equipment mesh region. And I want these entries to correspond directly to the blend shapes. So I'll have first legs, then arms, and then the torso. And let me just make a note here, corresponds to body blend shapes. All right, now each piece of equipment is going to have a public equipment mesh region array called the covered mesh regions. So if we go on, for example, to the helmet, this is going to have none of those mesh regions covered since it doesn't cover the legs, the arms, or the torso. But the plate body, for example, is going to cover two of those regions. It covers the arms and it covers the torso. And the plate legs covers just one of those regions, that being the legs. Now, as one creates sort of more varieties of armor, which might cover different regions of the body, 
uh, we can of course add in more of these mesh regions that we can more accurately define uh, which parts of the body are covered. But for now we should be able to get by on just these simple three. Anyway, we still need to get this to actually control the blend shapes here. So uh, let's go into the Equipment Manager script. And somewhere down at the bottom here, I'm going to create a method called set equipment blend shapes. And this is going to take in a piece of equipment called the item and an integer for the weight. And then we're going to loop through each of the regions that that piece of equipment covers. So we can say for each equipment mesh region called blend shape in item dot covered mesh regions. For each of those, we'll want to set the target meshes blend shape weight with this set blend shape weight method, passing in the index of that blend shape, which we can get just by casting blend shape to an integer, because remember, uh, we specifically wrote these in the same order as the blend shapes. So casting it to an integer will get the index. And then we pass in the weight that we've been given. So when an item is unequipped, we want to set the weight of all of the areas that that item used to cover to zero. So we can say uh, set equipment blend shapes, passing in the old item and a weight of zero. And of course, when an item is equipped, we'll want to say set equipment blend shapes, passing in the new item with a weight of 100. All right, so let's save that and run the game. And hopefully this time, when I pick up these items and equip them, we will no longer see any intersections with the body since those blend shapes have come into effect. Okay, so now that that's working quite nicely, I'd like to make it so that at the start of the game, the player equips his default outfit. And that outfit is made up of his hairpiece, the pants, shirt, and shoes. So we'll want to create a new inventory equipment. I'll call this hair. And let me write the name here, hair. Now, this doesn't need an icon because it's going to be a default item, which just means that it will automatically be worn when nothing else in the same slot is equipped. So it will never actually show up in the inventory. So let me then just add the mesh. So hair mesh over there. And I now want to go through and create the items for the shirt, pants, and shoes as well. But I will just speed the video up while I do this, because it's not particularly enthralling. Alright, so I've got these default items set up now. The pants, shirt, shoes, and hair. So I'm going to go into the Equipment Manager, and up at the top here, I'm going to have a public equipment array called the default items, and somewhere near the bottom, I'll have a method called equip default items. And here it will just loop through for each equipment in the default items array. Call the equip method on that item. Okay, so that will be called from the start method. We can just say equip default items. All right, and perhaps we'll want to call that method again at the end of the unequip all method. So over here, just equip default items. So that once it's removed uh, everything down to the bare skin, then we layer the default items back on top of that. All right, now there is one small change that I want to make to how the equipping works. So I think it makes sense that when you equip a new item, it starts out by unequipping the previous item. So over here, I want to call the unequip method, passing in the slot index. Now, one benefit of doing this is that we don't need to worry about adding the old item 
back to the inventory over here since that's all handled inside the unequip method. But what we do need to worry about is that we need a reference to the old item that's been unequipped so that we can pass that into this uh, on equipment changed event. So we're going to need to make the unequip method return the item that's unequipped. So I'll change this from a void to a equipment. And at the end here, it will return the old item. And of course, if the old item was null, then it will just have to return null at the end here. So then we can say the old item is equal to whatever is returned from the unequip method. And then we can uh, just pass that in over there. All right, so let's save that. Go into Unity and I'll go into the game manager. And I just want to add in all my default items over here. So I'll lock the inspector. And I'm just going to select all of these and drag them into the array there. And then I can unlock the inspector. And let's give this a try. So uh, all of the default clothing is there. And I'll quickly pick up these items. Let's run across the bridge. And I'll try equipping these. And it replaces the default clothing nicely. And then if I press U to unequip, those get added back there. And we're back to wearing our default clothing. And I can equip those once again, and it all seems to work nicely. All right. So our models are now nicely integrated with the equipment system. The only thing left that I want to do this episode is to replace these little cubes with the actual models of the objects that are being picked up. So the plate legs, plate body, and helmet models. Now... This isn't as straightforward as it might seem, because these uh, skinned mesh renderers are a little bit tricky to handle in the scene. You can see if I add this here, we can't actually see the mesh at all. So I'd rather replace the skinned mesh renderer with uh, the normal combination of mesh renderer and mesh filter uh, that we use for non-animated objects. We will, of course, be keeping these skinned mesh renderer versions for the actual uh, equipped items, but just for the preview items that might be lying around the game world, I'd like to uh, not use the skinned mesh renderer. So we could do this by hand, but uh, if we're going to end up with lots of different uh, pieces of equipment, I think it's better to make a script for that. So in the scripts folder, I'm going to create a folder for my helper scripts. And in here, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script. And I'll just call this something like convert to regular mesh. OK, I'm going to open this up. And this is going to have a method called convert. And here we'll start by getting the skinned mesh renderer component. So I'll just call this the skinned mesh renderer is equal to a get component of type skinned mesh renderer. All right. We'll then want to add a regular mesh filter and mesh renderer component. So let's say mesh renderer mesh renderer is equal to uh, we have to say game object dot add component of type mesh renderer. And then the same thing here for the mesh filter. So call that mesh filter is equal to game object dot add component of type mesh filter. We can then set the mesh filters shared mesh equal to the skinned mesh renderers shared mesh and the mesh renderers shared materials to the skinned mesh renderers shared materials. Having done that, we now want to delete the skinned mesh renderer since it's been replaced by these two separate components. So to remove a component from the editor, we'll need to say destroy immediate and pass in the skinned mesh renderer. And once it's done, we might as well delete this script as well. So we can just say destroy immediate this. Now we need some way to actually run this method. So let's just add a little context menu attribute. 
I'll call this convert to regular mesh, like so. I'll save that. And then let me go into the meshes folder and I'll drag into the scene the helmet, the plate body, and the plate legs. And to each of these, I'm going to add a uh, convert to regular mesh component. And we can click this little gear icon and just ask it to convert to regular mesh. Uh, this is that context menu that we created. So I'll press that. And now we've got these uh, regular meshes around here that we can move and rotate in the normal way. So in the prefabs folder, I'm just going to create a, another folder here called, uh, let's say, equipment previews. And uh, I'll have to do this one by one, I think. Just drag those in there, the helmet, the plate body, and the plate legs. And then we can delete each of these. All right, so now we can go into these little yellow boxes that we've been using as our placeholder graphics. And let me just set the scale of these up to one on all axes. And I'm going to remove the mesh renderer and mesh filter components from each of these. And also just turn down the radius a little bit of the item pickup script. And then I'm going to add the appropriate a model to each of these, so the helmet, the plate body, and the plate legs. And I'll select each of those and just reset the transform so that they're all lying uh, over there. And let's maybe just uh, rotate these a little bit just to add some variety. I'll move this one out over here. And we also want to match the box colliders to roughly the shape of the object. So something like that. And on the helmet, seems to be a little bit smaller on all axes. Okay. And lastly, the plate body pickup. Something like that looks okay. So uh, let's run this. And grab the helmet, the plate legs, the plate body, and open the inventory, equip those, and it looks like everything is working well. So that is going to be everything for this episode. Until next time, cheers.